Thank you very much, uh, Peter, for the kind introduction, and good afternoon to everybody. Um, I have uh, a number of uh, slides here. I, I'm aware that uh, we should speak for only 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I'll try to have the discipline, even if I was the, a former politician. No. <laughs> Actually, I should have uh, read carefully the note of Peter that um, there are specific questions that he raised. And I could have just said yes to all of them, and then my presentation is finished. No. <laughs> but then uh, I guess uh, some of you might want to hear more about how we did it and what else should be done in the next few years to even uh, withstand a severe crisis as what we have experienced in recent years. So what I will uh, try to do is I will... Uh, go over the charts and as quickly as some as we can for most of the charts and uh, try to slow down on some charts that are more important. So let me begin with the economy, the Philippine economy. In 19, in rather in 2007, uh, we were doing very well. In fact, it was considered one of the best years in uh, the Philippine economy in uh, this decade. But then, uh, of course, uh, everybody knew that uh, we had the commodity prices uh, going up. In 2008, the global financial crisis uh, in the last quarter of 2008, all the way down to the middle of 2009. And in the case of the Philippines, we also suffered another severe setback. We had two uh, major typhoons in late 2009, which uh, caused a lot of harm to our economy. But then, as Peter said, uh, we were fortunate, as most uh, emerging economies, especially in Asia, after the Asian financial crisis, we put in these reforms earlier, beginning with the financial reforms, later with the fiscal reforms, which I will explain earlier. And... Um, as uh, most countries, uh, we're committed to continue with our goal of uh, poverty reduction and meeting the targets under the Millennium, Develop the Millennium Development Goals for as, uh, as much as we can. Uh, and then uh, we will try to do much more uh, over the next few years under the new administration. This is an illustration of uh, how... This uh, reforms uh, affected growth. Uh, you will see in the chart in 2007, we grew by 7.1%. With a fairly decent growth earlier, then came the, the beginning of the difficulties, the crises. So we, we suffered with a growth rate of only 1.1% in 2009. We were fortunate that we didn't um, suffer a recession uh, we were fortunate, uh, which is again peculiar in the case of the Philippine economy, that uh, not only these reforms took place earlier, but we were consistently supported by the contributions of our overseas Filipino workers. They contribute about 8 to 9 percent of our economy. And then the rebound, as again pointed out by Peter, um, uh, for the first uh, two quarters of 2010, uh, the economy grew by about 7.5%, and uh, many economists and uh, international institutions suggest that uh, we could probably uh, grow by about uh, anywhere between 6 to 7, to seven even uh, more than that. Uh, these are the sources of growth in 2007 uh, on the expenditure side and on the income side. And uh, services is uh, particularly a very significant sector for the economy. So unlike um, many other countries, industrial and developing ones, uh, services would uh, consist uh, a very important component in our economy. Uh, we have also started diversifying our exports early, and uh, that's the reason why we also didn't suffer very much. Uh, when... Um, <coughs> China began to really emerge as one of the growth uh, 
uh, countries in the world, we were fortunate that proximity plus uh, complementation allowed us to increase our reliance uh, in other countries like China and reduce our reliance, reliance on the United States and Europe. Uh, although we have uh, suffered a decline in the share of capital goods imports, as I said earlier, uh, the services sector is the one that's uh, really dominating the Philippine economy. And in recent years, uh, the contribution of the agricultural sector has improved from 2% in the previous decades to about 4% a year. The favorable trends in the 2007 also contributed to the following uh, favorable results. The deficit of the national government uh, as a percent of GDP dropped to around 1%. Uh, while the consolidated public sector also posted a surplus. Tax revenue still uh, was a challenging, uh, was, was quite a challenge to us. Uh, we fell below target uh, and it would still be considered a key risk to our macro stability. We are fortunate to have uh, a number of uh, assets of the government uh, that we were able to sell and this also contributed to non-tax revenues. The, these factors also contributed to the improvement in the peso in relation to the dollar, and this resulted in a reduction in our debt service payment. It was also during this time that we had uh, an upgrade from uh, Moody's uh, from uh, negative to stable, and that also helped us in the, in the credit market. The... Um, Macro environment being favorable also contributed to low inflation. The financial system was geared for expansion uh, with uh, a large uh, amount of credit available and the NPL ratio declining. And uh, all of these indicators show that uh, the Philippines is a better position um, to weather financial vol 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 volatilities. I wasn't able to put in the, the latest figures, but I can show them later. No. Uh, these are some of the indicators that show that uh, the Philippines is uh, really in a better position to weather global volatilities. Declining inflation, declining uh, 91 T-bill rates, the peso, uh, although 47.6 in 2009, is about 42 pesos now in relation to the dollar the bank lending rate has also been declining. I mentioned this already. Uh, total factor productivity is still not very high uh, in relation to other ASEAN countries, but uh, uh, continuously improving over time. We still lack um, capital formation, and we lag behind other countries, and uh, this will be explained in subsequent charts. The high growth in 2007 uh, took place despite uh, declining levels because uh, we also had low levels of capacity utilization which uh, provided headroom for expansion and the increasing dominance of the service sector. Uh, our manufacturing was uh, operating at only 80% utilization rate. Uh, this, uh, we can probably go a little slower. Uh, we have a combination of uh, banking reforms right after the Asian financial crisis in 1997-98, together with the monetary reforms, and the fiscal reforms came a little later. And these were the examples of monetary reforms. The central bank allowed the peso to freely seek its own level. The, the central bank raised the liquidity reser reserves of banks to channel their excess liquidity into treasury instruments, and we started adopting inflation targeting in 2002. The banking reforms included the passage of the general banking law of 2000, of, uh, 2000 and the passage of the special purpose vehicle which was a mechanism for the disposal of non-performing loans and improve the asset quality of banks. 
and reduce the problem assets of the banking systems to manageable levels. The central bank also enhanced the corporate governance standards uh, by instituting safeguards against excessive risk-taking, ensuring fair exercise of business transaction, promoting consumer protection, and making the board of the directors fully accountable to its shareholders and the public. And this was the most important uh, fiscal reform that took place uh, in recent years. We expanded uh, the value-added tax from 10% to 12%. And we also broadened the coverage of uh, the VAT to include, among others, power and electric cooperatives, as well as petroleum products. And as a result, um, the revenues, the tax revenues of the government improved at an average of 1% of GDP annually. Uh, despite that, uh, we still lack uh, the attractiveness needed to sustain our economy, and we will go into this later. Uh, we lack capital compared to other countries like Vietnam and Indonesia. We still need to provide more infrastructure facilities. Most of our infrastructure Facilities are concentrated in Luzon and in Metro Manila. So there, was a, there has been an imbalance in our economic growth. We have three major islands in the Philippines, uh, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. These inadequacies in infrastructure have a large impact on the cost of doing business, so we're not yet that competitive. We lack... Uh, transportation and the network, transport network, and our electricity is one of the highest in uh, Asia. Much has, uh, needs to be done in the area of uh, reducing poverty and inequality in income distribution. You will note in the chart that uh, among the various regions, among the various uh, comp uh, regional components uh, in the Philippines, only four uh, experience uh, poverty incidence of less than 40 percent. And high inequality can expose institutions to what we call political capture. We still have a long way to go to achieve our Millennium Development Goals, and we need to improve in the following areas, particularly in achieving universal primary education, improving mater maternal health, and increasing access to reproductive health services. And one of the things that uh, we would normally ask is what has been the reaction of the legislature to the global financial crisis? I guess um, they reacted almost similarly to, other, similarly to other countries in the sense that uh, in the case of the Philippines, they decided to provide more tax relief and uh, what we call revenue eroding me measures. And these are some of the measures that unfortunately uh, brought about uh, an erosion in our revenues. The more significant ones are the individual income tax relief, totaling about 80, 81 to 86 billion pesos, practically eroding the gains of the expanded value added tax. So we were fortunate that uh, we had this growth. We saw the growth declining to a low of 1.1%. So we need to continue with the reforms to be able to withstand uh, future shocks. So under the fiscal reforms, we still need to continue uh, with our improvement in tax revenues. We also have to be vigilant in our spending and borrowings. 
and we need to allocate uh, more resources for infrastructure to attract investments and to accelerate growth in other areas other than Metro Manila and Luzon. And we need to continue with governance reforms. So moving forward, these are some of the reforms that uh, we need to work on, and I hope the legislature will act on some of these reforms. These are the excise tax reforms, or what we call sin taxes. We have uh, still uh, one of the lowest uh, tax rates for cigarettes and alcohol products in Asia, where economists normally like to continue raising the value-added tax, but at the same time, considering, consider lowering income tax rates. We also need to generate more, more revenues from uh, self-employed individuals, so we would like to simplify the system of taxing business income earning individuals. Um, there, there needs to be another look at the Central Bank Act. Um, I will discuss this perhaps in the open forum. Certain amendments to improve the supervisory functions of the Central Bank. And we need to strengthen the anti-money laundering law to allow us to generate more revenues, uh, especially from individuals and uh, and at the same time, increase our tax effort. Uh, these are uh, some of the things I mentioned earlier. Uh, I wanted to also mention the rationalization of fiscal incentives. We have a lot of uh, what we call redundant incentives given to certain sectors that, are, that do not need these incentives. So we'd like to channel them to areas where they're mostly needed and use the saving to provide more infrastructure facilities. These um, reforms or measures will be able to generate an additional 0.5 to 0.8% of GDP. And finally, uh, capital mar market reforms to mobilize savings. Um, we need to make uh, long-term savings uh, more attractive and be able to use these savings to finance many of our infrastructure facilities. And um, one of these also is uh, pursuing the financial sector tax neutrality reform uh, to provide or promote play, level playing field for financial institutions and instruments to encourage savings and investments. So this is... Uh, the summary of uh, our presentation, we need to continue towards the path of fiscal consolidations. More resources are needed for accelerated infra development and better social services to allow us to improve resilience to withstand future shocks and overcome challenges in the future. So there you are. Thank you very much. Now.